Let us consider acceleration resulting in circular motion, also known as centripetal acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity over time. Because velocity is a vector, a change in either its speed or direction is acceleration. If the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity, then only its direction will change, not its speed. Circular motion is defined by an axis of rotation with the radius remaining constant. The velocity, in this case, is tangential, i.e. always perpendicular to the radial vector. Now suppose we go in that circle through an angular displacement delta theta. Because the tangential velocity is always perpendicular to the radial vector, its change of angle will be the same. In the same time interval, the object will have moved through path length L. For small time intervals, this allows us to set up similar triangles where the base in its ratio to the sides is the same. In this case, L over R will be the same as delta V over V. We divide both sides by the time interval, rearrange, and then realize that L over delta T is just the velocity, and delta V over delta T is the acceleration. We rearrange and get our expression for centripetal acceleration, the acceleration resulting in circular motion. Now let us take a look at the causes for circular motion. By Newton's second law, acceleration must be caused by a net force. Net force is not a force by itself, rather it is the vector sum of all forces acting on an object. The direction of the net force will be the direction of the acceleration of the object. Circular motion is defined by an acceleration perpendicular to the velocity. Hence, if the net force that causes that acceleration is perpendicular to velocity, we will get circular motion. Net force resulting in circular motion is then referred to as the centripetal force. 
just like net force, centripetal force is not a force unto itself, but rather the vector sum of outside forces. When that net force is non-zero and always points towards a rotational axis, it will cause circular motion, hence centripetal acceleration. We can then insert the formula for this acceleration into our expression for Newton's second law.